Once a rat eats another rat, he gets a real taste for it, or becomes addicted. It's all in the blood. The blood is thick and sweet, and once a rat tastes it, it wants it more than anything else. This is the time to let the rat free. You will go hunting other rats. I'm not sure if you guys remember the case I had done a while back about Timothy Hazlitt from Excelsior Springs, Missouri being a potential serial killer. Authorities are one step closer to this being a possibility. A body has now been found in a blue barrel, just like the one he had in his yard. Come join me, Holly, for breaking news and also rarely told true crime, right from my murder she shed. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, leave me a comment, it would really help a girl out. Let's get right into this story. This case begins when on one morning last fall, a barely clothed woman in lingerie had a metal collar locked around her neck and duct tape pulled down around her neck when she showed up at the neighbor's house screaming that she had been kidnapped and held in a basement of Timothy Hazlitt's, their neighbors, for over a month. She was able to escape when he had went out. I think he took his kid to school and she was able to go to neighbors and get help. TJ is what this woman is being referred to in court documents. When the news first broke, police were trying to downplay the fact that he could be a serial killer or that he had kidnapped multiple black women in the past. The kidnapped woman, TJ, had told the neighbor she believed Hazlitt had killed two people and feared he would kill her too. She told authorities that she had not actually seen anyone else in the house while she was held captive there, but she stated that she had been repeating what Hazlitt had actually told her. Early this week, the Clay County Prosecutor's Office announced a new development in this case, as authorities positively ID'd human remains as those of Janie Crossdale of Kansas City. That discovery marked the end of a months-long search to find the 36-year-old black woman whose face and name appeared in January on Metro billboards as a potential witness. Police wanted to question her. Kayakers on June 24th happened on a blue barrel containing her body in Saline County, roughly 60 miles east of Kansas City. The body was in a state of advanced decomp at the time, and it took authorities about one month to actually ID Janie Crosdale. Police have said they were looking for Crosdale since they believe she was in Hazlitt's home before he was arrested. Surveillance video backs up that claim that Crosdale was in his home before her death. Excelsior Springs Police believe Crosdale was at Hazlitt's home sometime before TJ was confined there. I will show the video of Hazlitt's yard that I had shared on my last video. I will also link in my video comments the link to my last video, so if you don't know much about this case, you can get updated on it. In this video, you will notice all the blue barrels located in his yard were also found inside his home. I said at the time that he could have put the bodies in those barrels. This makes me wonder how many blue barrels they may find in the Missouri River. She was found on an island in the Missouri River near Grand Pass on Saturday, June 24th. The police chief of Excelsior Springs is now saying, My personal opinion, he said, he's done more than what we've already charged him for. But being able to prove that is a totally different thing. Authorities have yet to say how or when Crosdale died and Hazlitt has not been charged with the crime related to her death as of yet. But prosecutors sought to have Hazlitt's bond increased in court Monday based on evidence of Crosdale being present at his home at some point before she disappeared. A Clay County judge ultimately determined no bond increase was necessary for Hazlitt. It's not getting out of guess with that $3 million bond. I hope not. That's a scary thought if he did. As of now, just for the kidnapping, they're saying he's looking at like 36 years. But I pray to God that they connect this so they can get him for more than 36 years. He needs to be in prison for a lot because there is no telling what he's actually done. Like TJ, authorities have said that Crossdale was never reported missing to police. And that is why they could not connect any other missing black women to this case. TJ is a true hero. If she hadn't escaped, Hazlitt may have killed many more women. Bishop Caldwell called this out before they even knew TJ was even missing, saying how there was a serial killer on the loose because many black women in the area were missing at the time. Authorities shot this theory down as being untrue. 
Authorities are now asking the public to be on the lookout for any more blue barrels in the Missouri River. They didn't think there was any more women missing. Why are they asking to be on the lookout? Obviously, this is not true. Or they're saying maybe they weren't reported missing and they might be in there. Whatever the case, I do believe this guy is sick and he has murdered other women. I don't believe there's just one out there in that river in a barrel. It's sad that this man had a young son that was staying with him at the time when he had this woman held kidnapped in his basement. He was watching this child as he probably murdered women. Like, it's just disgusting. Investigators are reviewing whether Crossdale's barrel matches any evidence processed in Haslett's home. The news of Janie Crossdale's tragic death has left her family devastated and the community deeply saddened. And I do pray for the community of Seltzer Springs. I hope they don't find any more women in barrels, but I have my doubts. I believe this guy is a serial killer. I believed it from the start. I believe that we're going to sadly find more bodies. Anyway, I will keep you updated as soon as I find out anything else about this case. If her cause of death is finally said, I will let you know. I have a feeling it's going to be something like she was strangled. It's usually what it is when they kidnap these women. For some reason, they like to strangle them. Here's little Simon. He's come here to tell you bye. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can visit me and Simon right here in the Murder She Shed Weekly. We love to keep you updated. And like I said, we always do rarely tell true crime. Because we want all victims to find justice. Not just those that are out there and popular at the time. We want everybody to find justice. Don't we, Simo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me get over here. We love y'all. Have a great week. Bye. I'll see you in a few days. I got a new video fixing to come out. I was already working on this when I went back and did this one. Because I was like, hey, I got to let them know about this update. Anyway, love y'all. Bye. Once a rat eats another rat, he gets a real taste for it, or becomes addicted. It's all in the blood. The blood is thick and sweet, and once a rat tastes it, it wants it more than anything else. This is the time to let the rat free. He will go hunting other rats. He knows where they live, where they go to eat.